you ever feel like throwing open the window and shouting that the world is a wonderful place, Jeeves? Um, no, sir. Or dancing in the street, scattering petals on the passers-by? Only infrequently, sir. Well, then it's quite obvious that you've never been threatened with marriage by the appalling Madeleine Bassett, only to be saved at the bell by the intervention of the unspeakable Roderick Spode. They make an interesting couple, don't they, sir? Let us hope that the engagement stays the course. It's only gone to stay until Saturday, Jeeves. We have dispatched the traditional toast rack. On Sunday morning, Madeleine Bassett will awaken as the Countess of Sidcup and be out of Bertram's hair forevermore. I trust that your optimism is justified, Sam. <sighs> You're being a positive wet blanket this morning, Jeeves. I'm going down to the drones while you pack. Very good, Sam. Thank you. Oh, Bertie. Come in. I haven't seen you in a new day. I know, I've been rather busy. Coming down to Totley this week. Totley? No, what? The wedding. Madeline Bassett and Roderick Spode. Oh, no, 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 it wouldn't be after that. Well, since the time Barbie and I dressed up in black shorts for one of Spode's rallies and bombarded him with turnips. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry you weren't able to join us. Well, I couldn't anyway, as a matter of fact. Far too busy with Plumbo Jumbo. Plumbo Jumbo? Plumbo Jumbo. That's a good name, isn't it? That was my idea. I've sunk all my money into this, Bertie. We haven't got any money. Mm, yes, well, all my father's money. It is going to make me a fortune. Now, I've come across this inventor chap here, name of Whifflingham. Now, one of the things he's been working on for years is this machine. Now, it not only clears drains, but it coats the pipes with this secret sort of mixture while it does so, so they never get blocked up again. <laughs> Anyway, I've put my advertisement in all the papers and I'm just sitting back waiting for the work to flood in. Is that a joke? Is what a joke? Sir? You ought to take more care, cocky. Dancing about in the middle of the street like that. I thought you were a goner. Well, I blasted well nearly was a goner. Ah, uh, Joe Wooster. Hello, Reggie. We know him, Jeeves. I fear so, sir. His name is Brinkley. Perhaps he would care to come into the Ganymede Club for a restorative glass of whiskey, sir. Well. Sir, this is your famous Ganymede Club, is it? It's only a nice place. Thank you. It's good of you to say so, sir. Do we have to be a valet or a butler to be a member, is that it? Quite so, sir. Have a city on sec, have you, Reggie? I can't find the fella anywhere. I'm afraid not, Brinkley. <laughs> what a do, eh? <laughs> Don't miss the emergency meeting, Reggie. Is that blighter? Is he a valet or a butler? Not now, sir. An uncle in the grocery business died and left him a house and a comfortable sum of money. You employed him once, if you recall, sir. I did? What else? It was during that uncomfortable period, sir, when you and I had had a disagreement about your trombone playing. Oh, good grief, yes. He got drunk and burnt my cottage down. Now he's a landed gent, you say? Scarcely that, sir. He has a small establishment in Totley in the World. Coincidentally enough. Something I ought to tell you, sir. Tell away, Jeeves. <clears throat> the purpose of the emergency meeting to which Mr. Brinkley referred was to discuss the theft of the Ganymede Club book. Theft, Jeeves? Yes, sir. It's been stolen? The book in which you've written down all my endearing eccentricities for the amusement of your fellow Ganymedians? Not only your characteristics, sir, but the idiosyncrasies of all the gentlemen's gentlemen's gentlemen, if I may so put it. And by no means for their amusement, sir, but as a serious guide to those considering employment. The penalties for omitting any details are severe, sir. <sighs> we know what that blasted book invites, Jeeves. Blackmail, that's what it invites. Now you tell me that the blasted thing has been stolen. Well, what will be the upshot, Jeeves? Ruin. That'll be the upshot. I'm sorry, sir. Well, it's not an expression I often use, Jeeves, but... Cha! Very good, sir. <laughs> Ginger Winship. 
Bertie. Well, nice to see you. You're down here for the wedding? No, no. There's a by-election. I'm standing for Parliament. No. I am. But you're an absolute idiot, Ginger. I know. But it's a safe seat. I didn't particularly want to, as a matter of fact, but my fiancé insisted. She said I ought to carve out a career for myself. Yes, well, they're like that. A drink? Uh, no. Uh, my fiancé says drink hardens the arteries. Ah, well, my arteries could do with a bit of hardening. She has me on a reducing diet, too. Good God! Sounds just like Florence Cray. Who sounds just like Florence Cray? Ah, Florence. Um, no, well, uh, Ginger was just telling me about this, this beautiful, highly intelligent girl he's got himself engaged to, and I said... Harold is engaged to me. Ah, well, <laughs> that explains it. You're down for Madeline's wedding, I presume? Good. You can do some canvassing for Harold while you're down here. Uh, well... Good. Come on, Harold. You've got your meeting in ten minutes. You too, Bertie. Ladies and gentlemen, well, um, as you know, well, of course, perhaps you don't. Well, anyway, it's true. There's a by-election in Topley in the Wold. Here, here. Thank you. Oh, um, my name's Winship, by the way. Uh, Harold Winship. And I'm, well, sort of standing. I'm your... Uh, what do you call it? Um, a candidate. Oh, as a conservative, of course. I mean, if you'd like to vote for anybody, I'd be well jolly grateful if it was well me, don't you know? Thanks awfully. How'd it go? Not that it matters. Windship hasn't got an earthly. Take my word for a cocky. Phone your bookie right now. Get your money on the Labour candidate, Mrs. McCorkadale. He just stood there saying, ugh. Of course, it didn't much matter. You couldn't hear him more than five feet away. Well, I... Uh... Bert is exactly the same. Mumble, mumble, mumble. I say, Aunt Agatha. I think Bertie's got a very nice speaking voice. Nice? Put your knife and fork down straight, Bertie, if you're finished and don't slump. <clears throat> as father of the bride-to-be, I must say that I look forward to Saturday as being one of the happiest days of my life. The happy couple. Uh, the marriage uh, is an honourable estate. <laughs> In the 20th century, however, it has fallen into some disrepute due to the vexed question of overpopulation. It is my intention to introduce into the House of Lords a bill forbidding anyone earning less than £500 a year to have children. At £500 a year, he can have one child. At £1,000 a year, he can have two children. At £1,500, three, and so forth. Something up with the bath. The water appears reluctant to drain, sir. <laughs> Got the plug out, have you? That was amongst the first things I thought of, sir. I exchanged words with the man Brinkley earlier this afternoon, sir, at Mr Winship's election rally. Yes, I noticed. I must confess I was somewhat perturbed by his manner. Oh? What did he say? He advised me to place a wager on Mrs McCorkadale, but it was not so much what he said as the easy insolence with which he said it, as if he knew something that was not common currency and that he could profit by it. I'm here to introduce your new candidate. Ladies and gentlemen, my own elevation to the peerage debars me from standing for Parliament. But there are others to carry on my great work. My design for a giant collapsible channel bridge, first to tempt the unsuspecting foreign hordes and then to hurl them into the waves below is well underway. Yeah. Yeah. He has this 
this book in his possession, which she says contains information about some youthful indiscretions on uh, behalf of my opponent in this election, Mr. Winship, which, if made public, would be certain to make the worst impression on the voters of Totley and the world, and as he put it, make it a walkover for me. <laughs> He's asked me for money for the book. Oh, what did you do? I sent him away with a flea in his ear, of course. But I, I, I thought it only proper to let Mr. Winship know. <laughs> the moaning minis will try to tell us that these measures I indicate are too radical, too bold. But I have to say to them, Rome may have been built in a day, but it took only a trumpet to bring down the walls of Jericho. <laughs> I'd like to present to you the face of modern conservatism, my good friend, your candidate, Gerald Parsnip. <laughs> Harold Winship. <laughs> um, nothing seems to be happening at all. You're no good at drains, I suppose, Worcester. Good Lord, no. Every sink in the place blocked solid. This looks like a job for Plumbo Jumbo. Watto, Watto. Uh, well, <coughs> this pal of mine, uh, well, chum of a pal of mine, actually, has this wonderful machine for this sort of thing. I don't know that we want any machines. Some of these drains go back 200 years, you know. No, no, this is just the thing. The gentle giant, they call it. Who do? This pal of a chum of mine. Or the other way round, rather. I can't possibly come down to Totley. This boat would tear me limb from limb. No, he won't. It's your big chance, Happy. You can come in disguise. Right. <coughs> Pardon me, sir. I have some disquieting news. <sighs> sir Brinkley's got the book, and he's trying a spot of blackmail. Yes, sir. I don't see what harm he can do if old McCorkadale's turned him down. What if he should try to sell the contents of the book to the local newspaper, sir? And if, in consequence, Mr. Winship should lose the election? Well, I imagine democracy would survive the blow, Jeeves. Mm, the talk in the servants' hall, sir, is that Lady Florence has informed Mr. Winship that if he does not win the election, their engagement will be at an end. Good God! You mean Florence will once again be roaming the land, thirsting for confetti and a three-tiered cake? Indeed, sir. She may once more turn her attention to faithful old Worcester. It seems to me most likely under the circumstances, sir. This is serious, Jeeves. There's something else for it. We shall have to steal that book back from Brinkley. You should have heard them, Madeline. The applause, the cheers. If I were contesting this constituency, comrade so-called McCorkadale wouldn't get one vote. But you can't, Roderick. You're in the House of Lords now. I know, I know. Not one vote! What in God's name? Who's that? Are you the gent what said for Plumbo Jumbo? Uh, Don't I know you? Well, couldn't rightly say, Gov. I mean, shouldn't think so. Not unless you happen to be in the old plumbing game, like. <laughs> Uh, of course, drug a light. <laughs> it's me, it's me, Tuppy. I know it's you, you fool. Let's get out of here, Jeeves. We've got a burglary to commit. Mm -hmm. I'm here as a fellow member of the Ganymede Club, Brinkley. I have reason to believe that you have absconded with the club book, which, as you well know, is strictly against the rules. Oh, now, come along, Reggie. You had no right to remove that book from the club. Business is business, Reggie. I've done some pretty heavy betting on McCorkadale, and I have to protect my investment. <laughs>
just wanted a burglar. He was climbing into an upstairs window, sir. I removed his ladder so he could not make his escape, sir. What? Enemy book safely locked away. Well, then you take it on out to the house and lock the belly thing away. I'm going to sit down and catch my breath. Very good, sir. I didn't, uh... I suppose this seems a bit odd to you, Bertie. I love Magnolia. No, 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 Ginger. Put yourself together. You're meant to love Florence. Oh, Bertie. The trouble is you meet this girl with a perfect profile, curly hair and a willowy figure, and bingo, you say to yourself, this is the one. Accept no substitutes. Little knowing you're linking your lot with a female sergeant major with unusually strong views on the subject of discipline. Well, no, Florence is firm, I grant you, resolute. <sighs> She's a nag. Well, no, she offers advice. <sighs> if only I'd looked a little further, I'd have found the kindest, sweetest, gentlest girl that ever took shorthand. I allude to Magnolia Glendennan. She's my secretary. Yes, well, I'm sorry, Ginger, but there's a snag here. I expect you spotted it. Florence. Well done. No, it's all right. I'm going to get Florence to break our engagement. No, 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 Ginger, let's not be hasty. I'm going to lose the election. But how? The voters of Totley in the world would elect Bobsy the clothy and bunny rabbit if he was wearing a blue rosette. Ah, uh -huh, but you don't know about Brinkley. Brinkley and the Ganymede Club book. Oh, you do know? Mm-hmm. But anyway, that book contains a lot of damaging stuff about me. If it was revealed, it would hand the election to Mrs. McCorkadale on a plate. So anyway, I've given Brinkley a hundred quid, and he's getting the book for me. The first thing I'll do is send it to the Totley Argus Reminder with instructions to publish. Well, Ginger, I'm afraid I have bad news for you. Jeeves has the book. Well, that's good. He can take it to the Argus Reminder. <sighs> oh, I'm sorry, Ginger, but to Jeeves, that book is absolutely sacred. He'd never let it out of his hands. You can persuade him, Bertie. Oh, well, I doubt it, Ginger. Do my best, of course. <laughs> How long is this going to take? <laughs> oh, there you are, you see. <laughs> you can't rightly say, girl, can you? I mean, how long's a piece of adult look? <laughs> right, sir. Here we go, ladies and gents. Uh, oh, it isn't. Uh, Who are you anyway? Oh, I was um, 
I was just coming to see you. What for? What's that book you're carrying? It's a book. Uh, I'm carrying it. Bring it here. Oh, it's nothing. I, uh... Don't palter with me, man. Bring it here. write this? What if I did? Did you or didn't you? Oh, all right. It's most interesting. You can't use real people's names, though. Oh, no, I know. Trying to add verisimilitude, I suppose. Huh? Look here. What's your name? Uh, Mr. Brinkley. Look here, Mr. Brinkley. Here we are, sir. You don't understand, Jeeves. Mr. Winship wants it published so that he can lose the election and not have to marry Lady Florence. Who could have taken it? Mr. Brinkley, I dare say, sir. But I don't think we need have any worries on that score, sir. Lord Sidcup's eloquence on behalf of Mr. Winship is having such a marked effect on the electorate that I doubt that even revelations by Brinkley or anyone else could do anything more than make a small dent in his majority. Really, Jeeves? Are you sure? Well, that's wonderful. A way forward for this country, out of the slough of despond it has fallen into, is through public ownership of mines, railways, road transport, electricity generation, and all other essential services. <laughs> Don't let my opponent frighten you into thinking otherwise. <laughs> Well, I've listened to Mrs. McCorkerdale, and, uh, um, to be quite honest, I'm convinced. I think you should all jolly well vote for her. announcement to make. Bertie. How could he, Bertie? Oh, what ho, Florence? I didn't see you there. How could Harold give up the election in that cowardly manner? Uh, well... What is wrong with men today? Well... Perhaps I misjudged you, Bertie. Yes, perhaps you are no worse than the rest of them. Oh, oh, I am. Much worse. I'm going to give you one more chance, Bertie. Well, uh, I don't deserve it. No, yeah, perhaps not. But fate has ordained it. You may announce our engagement, Bertie. no intention of marrying Florence Cray. What are you burbling about, boy? I was referring to your engagement to little Madeline Bassett. Well, I'm not engaged to little Madeline Bassett. Little Madeline Bassett is engaged to Spove. That's why we're all assembled here for the wedding on Saturday. Do be quiet, Bertie. 
Lord Sidcup and Madeline no longer intend to marry. He feels that because of popular demand, he must renounce his title in order to enter politics again. Renounce his title? I don't see what that's got to do with it. It would appear that Sidcup's only attraction for Madeline was in the prospect of becoming the Countess of Sidcup. That gone, she would prefer to cast her lot in with you. What? what? But she can't. Well, she's not one of the girls that I had marked down for you, of course, but she does show remarkable determination for one so soppy. Perhaps there's more to her than meets the eye. has sounded, sir. Don't even mention food, Jeeves. Who is that fellow with the circles, Jeeves? You are perhaps thinking of the Florentine poet Dante Alighieri, sir, who in the first part of his Divino Commedia is conducted by Virgil through the nine circles of hell. That's the chap. Well, those fellows he bumped into had it easy. One could beg to take issue with you there, sir. Were any of them engaged to marry Florence Cray? The poet makes no mention of it, sir. Or condemned to stand, wave-faced and trembling at the altar steps while Madeline Bassett advanced on them up the aisle on the arm of her father? Indeed not, sir. <sighs> well, it had to happen to somebody one day, I suppose. And it happened to me today. Fate has dealt me the royal flush, Jeeves. I'm engaged to Madeline Bassett and Lady Florence at the same time. Oh. Oh, dear, sir. I'm sorry, Roderick, but there's nothing I can do about it. You brought it on yourself. I know, I know. I mean, it's no joke for a sensitive girl who thinks she's a bit of the Countess of Sidcup to have the fellow say, April Fool, all you're gonna be is Mrs. Spode. But she won't. She'll still be Lady Spode. But only a baronet's wife. Hardly the same thing. Added to which, you've landed me with that dangerous lunatic Worcester as a son-in-law. I know. But you've seen these people, Watkin. When I speak, a hush falls. Then, a little murmur of interest. Then, a mighty roar of approbation. They need me, Watkin. The people need me. Oh, it's you. Oh, hello, Spode. <coughs> Good Lord. Well, well. There you are, what? Hello, Sir Watkin. Splendid. You know what, can I simply cannot make it out? As far as I can see, is without any attraction at all. Intelligence? No. Looks? <laughs> no. Efficiency? No. When one considers all his defects, one can only suppose that Madeline is marrying him in the hope of reforming him. No, no. You see... Be quiet, Worcester. Let me tell you something, Worcester. If you disappoint little Madeline's hopes, I shall be waiting for you. Right. Well, uh, toodle pip. Oh! Why, Bertie, are you saying good morning to the flowers? Ah, uh, yes, that's right. Oh, Bertie, we were always soulmates. Really? No, no, Bertie, don't kneel to me. You've waited so long and so patiently, and at last tomorrow you are to get your reward. Tomorrow? Oh, the ceremony was all arranged anyway, and Daddy says we can't afford to cancel it and do it all over again. Ah, Brinkley. Ah, oh, Reggie. This is a bit of an how do you do if you like. I was on my way to see you, Mr. Brinkley, to demand the return of the Ganymede Club book. I haven't got it. I wish I did have. I'm trying to get it back off that Florence. Lady Florence has the book? She thinks I wrote it. She thinks it's a novel. But why are you so anxious to retrieve it? Well, now Spode standing. I needed to scupper him. My bet's on McCorkadown winning, no matter who's standing against her. But there's nothing in the book to harm Sir Roderick. The Eulily business is long out of date since he sold the lingerie shop. Eulily nothing. Don't you know about, uh... Well, I'm not about to tell you, am I? Something's only gone in recent. That happened years ago. 
Captain Moat was in the book myself till I just happened to be glancing through it the other day. And then she calmly informs me that the execution day is tomorrow. Tomorrow, Jeeves. I mean, what am I going to do? I, I can't step out of this room without one of those nasty women collaring me. Fortunately, neither of them has yet got wind of my engagement to the other, but that can't last. Oh, no, it's, 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 um, it's a knife edge, Jeeves, I tell you. Jeeves? Sir? Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I was cudgelling my brains as to how I might retrieve the Ganymede Club book from Lady Florence. The Ganymede Club book, Jeeves, I'm afraid. That compared with my imminent marriage to Madeline Bassett and subsequent imprisonment on charges of attempted bigamy, together with the probability of the brute Spo doing unspeakable things to my remains, the whereabouts of the Ganymede Club book is but a pimple on the face of the moon. Very good, sir. Uh, but I've only just heard that the book may contain sensitive information concerning Lord Sidcup, which might be used to persuade him to resume his title and so pave the way for a reunion with Miss Bassett. Oh, now, now, don't toy with me, Jeeves. Don't give a condemned man false hope. Oh, wait a minute. It's not that old Eulily business again, is it? No, sir. Something only recently inserted. Really? Oh, Jeeves. Jeeves, I'm sorry. I, I should have had faith. No, I'm not myself. Madeline Bassett's been preying on my mind. The prospect of being linked for life to a girl who would come down to breakfast, put her hands over my eyes and say, guess who, has given my morale a wallop. I can understand, sir. Very unpleasant. And what Lady Florence might do at breakfast is beyond imagining. Well, geez, we must get that book. Just looking for my socks. Socks? Why would you look for your socks in Florence's room? Florence's room? Oh, where am I? I, I feel faint. I must say, Florence, this engagement of Bertie's makes me very happy. Well, uh, I'm glad that you're pleased. Are you all right, Bertie? Where am I? I just told you you're in Florence's room. What I want to know, Bertie, is... Who are you? Bertie! What on earth are you doing in my room? Who? Uh, why is he lying on the floor? I think he's having a brainstorm. What with? Why should he come into my room to have a brainstorm? The poor darling doesn't know where he is. But you do, presumably. Then what are you doing in here? Well, I saw him come in and naturally since we... Oh, oh, oh! Bertie! Oh. He's making a lot of noise. My late husband never made a noise. What he needs is peace and quiet. If I could ask you to leave him with me. No, he must come with me. After all, here's my... Oh, 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 oh. Kindly remember that Bertie and I are oh, about to be... Oh, oh, oh. Where's the oh, poor the Bertie, pain. darling? Please do not address Bertie in that over-familiar tone, Madeline. I don't see why she shouldn't. She is, after all... Oh, 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 the agony! The agony! It's getting worse! Perhaps I can be of assistance, ladies? Oh, Jeeves! Have you ever seen him like this before? With increasing frequency, I regret to say, Lady Florence. We should loosen his collar. I hardly think such drastic measures are called for, Miss Bassett. If you'll allow me. <clears throat> Can you walk, sir, if I assist you? Uh, uh. Ah, 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 Jeeves. He recognises you anyway, Jeeves. He didn't know who I was, and I'm his... Ah, ah. Uh, I do apologise, sir. You uh, trod on my toe. Sorry, Jeeves. Just hold on, sir, and we'll get you your tablets. Why, George, Jeeves, that was a close call. Did you find the book, sir? No, Madeline came along before I had a chance to look properly. Well, I can't risk it again. You'll have to do it. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I could not possibly engage in anomalous activities in any house in which we are guests. Oh, come, Jeeves. <laughs> Uh, uh, sorry, Jim, sir. I was just a looking at your parts, Doctor. Tuppy, it's me, Bertie. 
Daddy! Oh, sorry. <laughs> I really do get rather carried away, you know. Look, I wonder if I want to go on the stage. You'll pardon me for interrupting, sir, but a notion has just come to me. Well, that's the best news I've... Yes, Jeeves. Yes, Tuppy, come in here a minute, will you? Have a seat, Tuppy, old man. Drink. Uh, Jeeves, a uh, brandy for Mr Glossop, will you? What's going on? <clears throat> now, Tuppy, we have a little job that we'd like you to do. Job? What job? What are you doing up here, Constable? Sir Watkin ordered me to patrol the house, Mr. Burfield, for to guard the uh, wedding presents. No, no, no! What was that, Mr. Burfield? Oh, that'll be Mr. Worcester's room. Look, Tuppy, in your role as Mr. Plumbo Jumbo, you have access to any room you like. We'll make it easy for you. You can, you can steal the book while everyone's down at dinner. I'm not stealing the book at all. As an added insurance, sir, I could send Lady Florence a telegram demanding her attendance in London. Well, there you are, you see, Tuppy. Can't say fairer than that. Uh, get that sent off now, will you, Jeeves? No, 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 don't bother, Jeeves. I'm not going to do it. Very well. Uh, Jeeves, just pop down and ask Sir Roderick to come and see us, will you? No! That isn't cricket, Bertie. I'm sorry, Tuppy. The desperate times call for desperate measures. Uh, poor Mr Glossop, another desperate measure, will you, Jeeves? Pardon me, uh, Lady Florence. Mr. Brinkley, good afternoon. It's a uh, part my book, Lady Florence. I've been reading it with immense interest. Oh. <laughs> you have a most forthright and muscular style. Oh. I just wondered uh, if I could have it back. And the brilliant use of different handwriting for each chapter to reinforce the concept of the multiple narrator, I presume. Yeah, multiple uh, thing. Yes, uh, <coughs> I just brought... Pardon me, uh, Lady Florence, a telegram for you. Oh, thank you, Jeeves. What a nuisance. I have to go to London to see my publisher this evening. What I'd like to do Goodbye, is... Goodbye, Mr. Brinkley. in the world by election you know, for which I am standing is merely a beginning. Sir <coughs> so Watkins, sir, I have apprehended two intruders. Sir. No, no, that's a Jimbo Jambo man. Yeah, yeah, but a plumbo jambo, sir. Then what were they doing of in Miss Florence's bedroom, Sir Watkins, sir? He's got my job! You! you. You're the man who ruined my Earl's Court rally throwing Swedes. Turn it. No! No! Do you know what I'm going to do to you? No, Roderick, leave him alone. Is there any chance of getting the plumbing fixed? Mind you, he's only made it worse so far with that Dumbo Crambo. Dumbo Jumbo. I'm going to bother you all over the wall. <laughs> and then I'm going to dance on the fragments in Hobley or Boots. Ah! Oh, get him some more, kids, sir. Any luck, Jeeves? Oh, indeed, sir. I think if you were to say the word Celia to Sir Roderick, it would have the desired effect. Celia. Yes, you, you, you couldn't tell me a bit more, I suppose. Rules of the Ganymede and all that? Just so, sir. Right, so, so I just say the word Celia. Spode becomes as putty in my hands, reclaims his title and marries Madeline. I think it extremely likely, sir. Right. <laughs> Now, I want 
want you to give up this extremely stupid idea of standing for Parliament. Oh, uh, you want me to give up this extremely stupid idea of standing for Parliament, do you? Yes, I do. Well, you should have said so before, Worcester. <laughs> you snivelling little wet. Do you know what I'm going to do to you? Yes, 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 Spode. I'm accustomed to your threats of mindless violence. The first thing you will be aware of is the sound of your teeth as they rattle down your throat, Worcester. Then... I have just one thing to say to you, Spode. Celia. Celia? Yes, Celia. What was it, Delia? No, it was Celia. Oh. Uh, oh, Celia. Uh, <laughs> uh. So, let's hear no more of it, Spode. I'm sorry, Worcester. Well, apologies are just not good enough, Spode. No, I know. I'm sorry. Oops, there I go again. I'll just look to your behaviour in future. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, look here. Good. What about Celia? Uh, well... Uh, you, you don't know anything about Celia, do you? Uh, well, the, um, it's, a, it's a girl. Ha! You don't know anything about Celia. And even if you did, you wouldn't be able to prove anything. Now, now, look here, Spurn, now. Oh, Mrs. Gregson. Now, you're sure you can get proof in London, please? I believe so, sir. Be back by morning? I will do my very best, sir. Go then, Jeeves, on wings or what's it? Very good, sir. Otherwise, tomorrow I'm the chief mourner of my own wedding. <laughs> Where are you, Jeeves? Like a man, Worcester. Jeeves! Ha! Bertie, I really am most annoyed. That telegram purporting to come from my publisher was a hoax. Good Lord. The time was not altogether wasted, however. I was able to give a lot of thought to our forthcoming wedding, as I dreamt. Oh, good. St. Margaret's, Westminster, I think, don't you? Yes. Oh, uh, well, uh... Of course, Daddy will expect the reception to be at the Park Street house. Ha, huh, ha. Huh. Now, do you... Just go get my powder. Bertie, you mustn't see me! Why did you say? That you mustn't see her. Did she say that? I, I, I thought she said the dress looked see me. See me? Yeah, so the, that's why she's rushed back into her room, I expect. Take a few seams out. Bertie, can you just stop driveling for one moment and tell me just exactly what is going? Oh, all right, dash it. Very well. Madeline and I are going to get married. No. Madeline is going to marry the Earl of Sitka. No, she isn't. She's given him the bum's rush and I'm... She's marrying you? Yes, in about half an hour. What? Worcester! Where's that blasting chum of a part of a friend of yours? Well, how should I know? Smoke chased him off. We're saying to run in! Oh, nice, well, I... Oh. Made it worse, you blithering idiot! You better get off to the chapel, Worcester. Sir Roderick's waiting for you. He's going to be your best man. What? So you are not the groom after all, my lord? No, he is. I am. 
Perhaps not, sir. Jeeves, did you... Perhaps Sir Roderick would be kind enough to come into the vestry for a moment. What for? Sir Roderick, in his youth, was in the antipodes and in straitened circumstances. Those circumstances improved dramatically overnight, and Sir Roderick was strongly suspected of nobbling Celia in a kangaroo race, a sport to which our Australian cousins are inordinately attached. And that was the actual Celia? No, sir, uh, but I felt that the likeness was sufficient to deceive Sir Roderick. Sir, that Miss Bassett bore the end of her engagement to you so bravely. <laughs> bravely wasn't the word for it, Jeeves. As soon as she heard that Spode was going to be an earl again, that there was a sharpest chance that you could still make countess, she dropped me in like a hot pimento. Although, you know, I must say I can't help feeling badly for Lady Florence, Jeeves, in spite of her brutal assault on my topper. That is hard to forgive, sir. But a lady will express heartbreak in many different ways. Persuaded Sir Watkin that Brinkley was just the type of personage to restore the faith of the local electors in the Conservative Party. He will be adopted as candidate. And it seems that the mixture of prominent novelist and rising parliamentarian was too heady for Lady Florence to resist. Well, of all the callous, heartless, unfeeling women, Jesus. Precisely, sir. Thank you, Jesus. I endeavour to give satisfaction, sir. Dearly beloved, we are gathered together here in the sight of God and in the face of this congregation to join together this man and this woman in holy matrimony. Which is an honorable estate instituted of God in the time of man's innocency. Signifying unto us a mystical union of 